I wanted to come on today to talk about the various ways in which dusties, for those of you who don't know, a dusty is basically this generation's term for a scrub <laughs> coined by Shira Seven. It basically means a man that doesn't really have anything going for him, is not like does not have the ability to provide or take care of a woman and yet thinks that somehow he deserves to or should be able to get into a relationship with and benefit from contact with a woman. Okay, well, let's first backtrack a little bit. So I posted a few story times onto my channel in the past few days about just my recent encounters, two of my recent encounters with Dusty's that I met just outside when I was minding my own business, like not drawing any attention towards me. But Dusties are drawn to feminine women, like moths to a flame, because they know that she has something. She has that life force energy that he is desperate for, but he knows that he cannot actually afford to pay for it like you're supposed to. And so he will try all kinds of tactics, Jedi mind tricks, any way possible he's gonna try and get some of her attention steal some of her light suck some of her energy and so I have hundreds of personal stories of bumping into or you know being unsuspecting in public and just getting ambushed or yeah blindsided by a dusty or yeah cornered by a dusty and it being very difficult for me to escape those situations i'm sure a lot of you ladies have experienced that as well so in public some of the common ways that dusties will try to get your attention which is the same as money attention is value like your attention your energy even just your smile or waving hello that is something that activates them it gives them strength and so your even just like a simple smile from you as a woman that's worth money men that do not know you you don't have any obligation to them they should not have access to that they should not benefit from that unless they are compensating you in some way and so a lot of the times um men who do not have the means to afford you like they know that they can't afford someone like you they still want to get something from you for free anyway when they encounter you in public they will do all sorts of antics such as make excuses to try and talk to you even though they have no business doing so they'll try to come up to you and pretend that they have a question that they're asking for help like they'll ask you oh do you know how to get to such and such station when they know damn well that there is like you guys could be in an airport and there is an information desk literally two steps to the left of you guys and yet instead of doing the proper normal thing like the logical common sense thing which is to go to the information desk to ask the people who would know the answer to such a question they will make an excuse to come up to you because you're the one that they want to talk to right because once they see like how beautiful and how radiant and feminine you are they want to get a little bit of your attention for free instead of going about things the proper way and asking people at the information desk who are actually being paid to help people find directions. My two story times that I recently posted, one of them was a Dusty that I encountered on a plane that was sitting nowhere next to me. And yet somehow he created, like he forced a situation in which he could come into my vicinity and ask me for a pen, even though I didn't have my pen out. Like he probably saw me using it before, but then I put it in my bag later and plus why was he watching me so intently in the first place i was literally minding my own business and writing stuff down in my journal and i saw that the guy that he was sitting next to like the guy that he was directly sitting next to that guy had a pen i saw him filling out his customs form as i was going to the bathroom one time so he could have easily asked the other male that was sitting next to him for a pen if that is truly what his first priority was but of course that was not the point the point was that he was trying to make an excuse to come and talk to me even though 
it was like the hugest reach that you could think of. We were sitting nowhere near each other. We were diagonally apart. And on top of that, he was not even sitting in the aisle seat. He was sitting one seat on the inside. So that tells you that he's extra dusty if you can't even afford aisle seat in coach, right? Anyway, um, so you can go watch that. I'll link that story time and I'll link another one where when I was going on a desert safari tour with my friend and the tour guide who picked us up basically wouldn't let up on asking me questions, just trying to get information out of me, trying to get entertainment out of me because he was excited that he was excited when he saw that or heard that we were both from Tokyo, even though like we were the paying customers there, his job was to drive us safely to the campsite of the safari. And yet he used that situation as an opportunity to try to suck energy from me to try to force me to talk to him about life in Tokyo when I was giving clear signals that I wasn't interested in answering his invasive questions. So these are the type of tactics that they'll use out in public. I'm sure that any of you ladies out there can relate. I'm sure you all have endless stories of your own in the same vein. I'm trying to think of other examples of what they would do if you if they happen to come across you in public and just be so drawn to you. Oh, so another thing, like they will literally, um, I've had people, this sounds crazy, but I have had guys literally like walk past me and brush against my skin on accident, but it was clearly not something that was avoidable. Like there was clearly enough room for them to move past me without touching me. But I've had guys purposely like bump into me just because they probably see that my skin looks super soft and they want to cop a feel essentially. And in Japan too, I don't know if you guys know, Chikan is a huge problem that they have here actually which is um, essentially it is a groping problem in the Japanese trains because the nature of the trains here is that they tend to get very, very crowded, especially during rush hour. And it gives a lot of pervs that are basically incels, right? Like what we would call incels this day and age that are completely starved for feminine touch, feminine attention. It gives them... Um, kind of like a cover to push up against, you know, unsuspecting young, attractive women inappropriately, because they know that there is little recourse for it in a crowded train, it would be hard to prove that they're doing something on purpose. And so as long as they don't explicitly touch you in a private area or something, they can typically get away with pushing up on you more than is necessary. Because even in a crowded train, there is a way to stand yeah there's a way to stand even if you're in a crowded train even if you're pushed up against other people there's definitely still a way to hold yourself that is respectful and sending a clear message that you're not there's not any funny business going on make no mistake that these guys know what they're doing men are very aware hyper aware even i would say of what is the proper conduct and what is not the difference between men and women though is that they don't care about whether or not what they're doing is right per se they care about what they can get away with in the moment or in that particular situation so they're aware of what could get them in trouble in the me too era that's like the true barrier for most guys that's the true boundary that stops them from acting inappropriately it's not necessarily like their moral compass the way that it is for most women and like of course i'm not talking about all guys okay please don't come on here not all guys i'm talking about the ones that do exhibit this kind of behavior but yeah men know exactly what they're doing um my guy friends that i have who i consider to be very healthy masculine guys because i don't associate with any other type the ones that I've talked to, they've told me that when they're in a crowded train, it's precisely because they want to make it explicitly clear that there's no funny business or pervy intentions on their part going on. They will actually purposely put their both of their hands up to hold, you know, the handlebars just to purposely make sure that there's no doubt whatsoever by any other party in the train that they're not, they don't have like pervy intentions, right? They're not trying to chicane a girl. Yeah, this is why we have women only train cars in Japan during rush hours. They're designated. It's usually on um, it's usually like the last car or the last two box cars. I don't know the exact time, but let, let's say from 6 to 9 a.m. or I think it's uh, a little bit the windows 
quite long actually, like the rush hour. So maybe seven to 10 a.m. And then again in the evening from five to 8 p.m., something like that. And I know that Japan is also, is not the only country who does this, but it is a big enough issue to where they have to literally put in like regulations of that sort. The most common scenario that our mind goes towards when we talk about or when, when the subject of men, you know, taking things from women, like taking advantage of women comes up is, well, oh, this guy is using this girl for SEX and not giving her anything in return. He's not giving her commitment or he's not giving her a wedding ring. And you have to understand that you have to understand that for a lot of these guys, like most guys, they know that they're not even at the level of thinking about the possibility of sex like they know that the possibility of actually sleeping with you is slim to none especially if it's like a total stranger on the street unless they're like extremely extremely successful or attractive in their own right most guys they know exactly where they stand in the totem pole and so they're not even like there are so many levels to which men can benefit from your feminine energy and essence sex itself is literally like like level a thousand most men are trying to figure out how to get from zero to like level one two three maybe up to five and so men don't necessarily have to sleep with you at all in fact most men who try to whenever they try to you know get something for free out of women and a lot of them are not even doing it consciously it's just an unconscious like they cannot help it it's like a moth to a flame so most men they get their rocks off from literally literally anything that you can do like if you're a pretty girl and you breathe in their direction we've all experienced this where men take us simply smiling and being friendly as oh she likes me right like that's automatically how their brain interprets feminine attention feminine essence so to you you're like what the hell i literally just smile at everyone because i'm friendly i'm just giving you a greeting i don't like you at all to you it's annoying because that's obviously there's nothing there but to him just you smiling even if it wasn't your intention to send some sort of signal to him he will take that as like like energy for himself that will literally energize him to be able to go on with his long day at work or something and so the topic of the video today what i wanted to discuss is that since we live in the digital age there's actually I think a whole host of ways that men usurp and suck our energy from online that is not, I haven't really seen this being discussed that often, but um, I noticed that in the online space, it's similar to what happens, you know, out in the field, out in real life, but in online space, it's almost, it's even more. I have decided, and the reason that I'm doing this live today is that I decided that we cannot let what's happening like the way that men suck energy from women for free in the online space we need to crack down on that too the way that we quickly recognize and crack down on that in real life right so in real life if you can you know if a random man comes up to you and starts asking for directions or making some sort of excuse to talk to you right asking you for a pen even though he could have easily asked any other person that was closer to him that's easy for us to detect because we can read energy right we can read a lot of like nonverbal cues if you're actually interacting with the person it's easy to tell if they're genuinely just like lost or something or if they're trying to make weasel their way into an interaction with you but i feel like in the online space a lot of that goes over our head because a lot of nuance is lost over text and you know people's behavior online differs so much like for example some people have social media accounts solely for the purpose of viewing other people's posts some of my friends even they they have active like they have instagram accounts and they view posts but they never like or interact with anything online a lot of people are like that men and women but then you have on the other side of the spectrum some people who are very very involved like very active go back and forth have full-on conversations with str other strangers or other people who are interested in the same content that they watch online and so it's hard to tell like what somebody's true intentions are online much harder than 
in a real life scenario. And so what I noticed online, the basic, how do I want to word this? Bottom line for men when they're trying to get attention from you online is that as long as they have some line of communication to you, whether it's your phone number or even if it's just through a one-sided follow on Instagram, you don't even have to be following back. But as long as they have access to you, they have access to view your posts, your Instagram, that will give them a sense of like access and by extension, a mini sense of ownership over you, which gives them a vehicle through which they can suck some energy from you and benefit from you without you getting compensated for it. So my whole stance is that don't give them that energy for free, no matter how small it is. Like you should not be leaking your energy online for any Tom, Dick, and Harry, for any bum out here who has not earned it to just pick up as if it's like pennies on the street. I want to now go through a couple of the ways that we, I think it just goes over our head because nobody has really like explicitly talked about this particular way in which men uh, benefit from and freeload off of women's life force energy online. So one way that they'll do this, which happens to pretty much every single girl, if you have even just one social media account, you don't even have to be on all of them. But if you have a Facebook, if you have a Twitter, if you have Instagram, um, if a guy friends or follows you out of nowhere on any of these social media platforms, and then if they're constantly like ghost watching you, following you, watching your every post or move on social media, even though they keep their profile private, they never show their face. They either have a meme picture or it's blank or it's a picture of like Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> I don't know why I came up with that example. I I think it's because, you know, my name is Ren. So like people used to always say, oh, Ren and Stimpy when I was in high school. But I've actually never watched a full episode of that cartoon. Anyway, totally sidetracked. But yeah. And also like I can tell. OK, so can anyone relate to me? I can literally tell when if the profile picture is not an actual picture of the person, I can just tell by the style of the picture or just by my intuition whether it's a man or a woman just by looking at it like even if it's the same okay like let's say there's two people who have a picture of a cat as their profile picture I can tell by the style of the picture which one is like an incel type of a dude just lurking online and which one is a female follower like maybe just a, a conservative you know silent female user of social media but not using it in like a weird way maybe she's following me for my makeup content because I know the guy's picture it's probably gonna be some memeified cat picture like something that is just very what's the word like the style is not elegant the style is just very juvenile looking whereas the girl with the cat profile picture it's gonna be cute it's gonna be like pink hearts and stuff you know the vibes don't lie is what I'm trying to get at like the vibes don't lie I wonder if um if I can see comments Oh, and then, oh, I almost forgot. I have exhibit A, B, C, D, E of my own. So yeah, this is a way that, hold on, give me one moment. Bear with me, guys. Let me just, let me save these all as separate PDFs. Okay, so I can't even upload all of them at once. I have to do one by one. Are you serious? Or do I have to get the paid version? Maybe that one is easier to navigate. Okay, yeah, so the first way that I was talking about that digital dusties, we're going to call them, suck energy from you in the digital space is just by following you out of nowhere, even though they have no connection to you whatsoever. I'm not talking about if someone like follows you and introduces themselves in a proper masculine way, like, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. I noticed you. I'm interested in taking you to dinner or something. That's totally fine with me. I'm talking about following you out of nowhere with no warning, no greeting whatsoever, just following you so that they can lurk on your page and benefit. Yeah, like benefit, get some relief, get eye candy from your pictures. It doesn't even have to be like if you're somebody that doesn't post, you know, sexy pictures like bikini pictures or whatever, that's still it doesn't matter. They're still getting value 
from your beauty for free even just your selfies with your pretty face and your cute outfits like that they're still getting value from that again it's not just about sex related things but yeah so this is just a few examples of friend requesting you out of nowhere on facebook following you out of nowhere on instagram and then their account is private right they don't have any profile they don't have any description about what type of person they are there's no way for you to vet this person right like why are you looking at my account and i know like in my case in particular so honestly i have been debating on whether or not i should just switch my instagram account to private this year since i do social media as like a side hustle and i do need the ability to tag brands and stuff it helps with my visibility sometimes brands do repost or acknowledge or engage with my posts so if i were to turn my settings to private all of that opportunity would go away so that's also why i made the decision to kind of scale back on instagram i don't enjoy instagram anyway i feel like the people most of the people on there are just silent haters like i don't know i get a weird vibe from instagram interestingly enough i'm really enjoying tiktok a lot more like even though it's kind of the same thing on tiktok there's not really like there's not a ton of engagement on my tiktok but i don't get the same it's not as many people as i know right like i prefer knowing that it's just a bunch of strangers watching my tiktoks the reason that they're watching my content is probably because the algorithm recommended it to them and it's like i feel better knowing that it's people who are just genuinely interested in those topics that i'm talking about whereas on my instagram there's too much of a mix of you know people that follow me because of my social media activity but then also people from my real life or like from my past who follow me just because we were friends in college or something which is fine i mean i have no problem with those people but it just makes me feel weird sometimes that i'm posting all this stuff and then i don't really get a reaction from anyone so like anyway um <laughs> i am rambling so hard let's bring it back so yeah this guy what i do is well i'll get into the t um the tips on how to prevent this, like how to preserve your energy and make sure it doesn't leak out to these digital dusties later on in the stream. But I just wanna show you like, again, the level of, okay, so this guy in particular, right? Sometimes I will, just like I was telling you about how I can tell even if the profile picture is not a picture of the actual person, I can tell whether it's a man or a woman, right? Like a fellow makeup girly versus an incel. Or even an incel versus like a normal man. There are a handful of normal dudes that follow me sometimes that I have no problem with just because I can tell from, I can just tell from the vibe in their profile. Like usually they'll have, I mean, usually their account won't be private, so I'll be able to see. And then they'll actually have something written in their profile that indicates they're a normal human being. But I wanted to... I took a screenshot of this guy in particular because he followed me out of nowhere and you can see that this guy has like a very high following account so that tells you some guys they're like it will be like five followers versus three thousand people that he's following so those people you know for a fact that they're just on here they're just on this platform to take 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 why would you allow yourself to be another one of those people that he's usurping energy from and so i noticed that this guy like yeah he's following over a thousand people and account is private so that already i don't like and then also the key indicator here this immediately gave me bad vibes when i read that his profile it says currently suffering in the uae so this guy probably found me through one of my Dubai posts or when I was like posting, you know, when you post on your stories on Instagram and you tag yourself at a certain location, people who click on that location's stories, they can view your story. So this is probably one of those guys that found me or was, you know, looking at one of my vacation stories while I was in Dubai back in December end of December, beginning of January. And just this one line currently suffering in the UAE, like what type of a person especially what type of grown ass man puts something like that as their bio, right? It, like, what are we, 16? And so I click here, I clicked on, can you guys see like my mouse or is that just my site? But anyway, you can see above that, right? There's an at mark that indicates he has a threads account. So I click on his threads account just to like check out more since I can't see his Instagram profile and I'm not gonna 
request him to follow back, I decided, okay, let me look at his threads and see what he's all about. And it was exactly as I expected. So let's take a look at what his threads are. Trigger warning, this is just extremely vulgar and gross posts that I'm about to show you. It's basically like the poster child for a MGTOW or incel profile. These are the type of posts that this guy posts regularly on his threads. Like, get the away from me. I don't want you to follow me. I don't want any connection with you whatsoever. Like, you are not going to have any line of connection towards me. You're not going to benefit even one ounce from looking at my pictures or my content online. So, of course, I blocked him immediately, right? So, um, let's see. What other ways do men try to steal your feminine energy online. Yeah, so most guys ghost watch. They'll never say anything. They might like a post once in a while. Some of them will go as far as to message you just totally like time wasting messages. You can tell because um, the intention is not to take you out or invest in you in any type of way. What's happening is that it's literally maybe 3 a.m. or something where they are and they're lonely and bored. So they decide to message you to hopefully just get a hit of that feminine energy, a hit of that drug. Don't give it to them, you know? So for example, I'll show you guys. I'm putting myself out on blast here to really um, try to convince you guys of how important it is to keep this at bay. So like, for example, this guy, right? every time I post, not every time, but like once in a while. So this guy doesn't even contact me regularly. I notice that he has a pattern every few weeks. I'll see his name under people who have viewed my stories. And then if I happen to post like a really interesting or sexy or cute picture, or if I'm on vacation, he will periodically just respond. And I don't know, like, tell me why I'm still being polite up until uh, January 4th. That That's totally on me. Actually, I'm, I'm blocking him right now. I am going to block this guy right now. But before I do that, let me tell you the backstory. So this guy, I matched with this guy maybe five or seven years ago now on Tinder. And so at the time, you can imagine I was completely in a different headspace. I was never a pygmy in the sense that I would never like, I would never pay for a guy's meal or anything like that. But I was definitely, yeah, I had pick me ways just you know learned from popular culture i was never a pick me to the point where i would actually you know pay for the date or sleep with a guy or give him any type of physical play for free but i was very much attracted to i would be enamored with looks and swag and all of that right and still am to some degree but I, at this point, I see the game. And so even if that's my initial reaction to someone, as soon as they start acting in an unsavory way, I lose my attraction immediately. And I consider that to be like a very healthy place to be. But yeah, I matched with this guy maybe like five or seven years ago on Tinder. And I thought he was really, really hot, basically. And so there was a point in time where I was like, oh my God, I really want to meet him. I never said this to him. Another thing that I'm proud of for myself is that I'm very, very controlled in my interactions with guys. Like no matter, even in the past when I would get really caught up in how attractive a guy was, like if he didn't me message me first, if he didn't make the conscious effort to reach out to me, I would not reach out to him first, come hell or high water. No matter how much I was obsessing in my mind, at least I had the discipline to never reach out. And so that was kind of like how the situation was with this guy. Like he would just, he would text me and talk to me once in a while and I would think that oh my god he's so cute but then he would like our communication would fall off and then I would want to text him again but I would not do it right until he inevitably picked up again a few months later anyway the point is um about three years ago now I completely lost attraction to him I think during the pandemic we had like more time talking to each other I think because you know everyone was not sure whether or not the world was going to end so that was kind of like a period where we were talking a lot online and then after that like when I started to really work on myself and work on becoming more savage like by that time I had consumed so much of Shira's content so much of the universe guru content that I completely rewired my mind when it came to men even more so than like I always had the 
seed of wanting and being attracted to and only tolerating masculine providers. But I really I evolved into my next form after the pandemic, right to the point where I'm not even faced, I'm not faced at all by like a handsome face or a swaggy attitude. Of course, I'm human, I notice it, but I'm not I quickly get over that because no matter how attractive a guy is physically, I always like I, I'm not attracted to you more than I'm attracted to myself. I'm not attracted to you more than I believe myself to be the princess and the person that deserves the best treatment and worship from a guy. So anyway, um, so after that switch, like fully cemented in my brain, I also completely lost attraction to this guy. But then I started to think of him as, oh, OK, kind of just like a bro, right? Like a brother, because he's also a Leo. We're exactly the same age almost. And so I put guys like that in the category of gay best friend almost and so from the pandemic onward i was like okay we'll just keep him in my contacts because i don't think like he's not a bad person it's just he's very juvenile right and i i don't want anything to do with him you know romantically whatsoever he wants to sleep with me obviously if there was ever an opportunity that arises but that would never happen and i only see him as like a gay a funny gay friend that pops in from time to time but yeah um like this type of message though guys will from time to time send to you just to i was gonna say just to remind you but actually no it's more just to remind themselves that they still have access to you they still have a way to reach you because the thing that they are concerned about the most is just whether or not their feminine supply is still there and so this is just their way of testing whether or not they've still got you on the line on the hook and um yeah like any message that is not sent with a deliberate intent to invest in you or to meet up with you right invest in you in some way text messages especially with guys the purpose of texting is to make plans about what you're going to do in person, essentially. Other than that, like every single text that a guy sends you, every second that you spend, even if you leave them on read, if you spend two seconds reading his text, that is two seconds of your time that he just successfully got out of you for free. You know what I mean? And so I'm actually gonna block this guy right now because I do not care. I don't know why. I think it's cause like, it's already been seven years. Like let's just keep up the charade, but no, block so freaking useless i just remembered something crazy i even had a guy once click on my paypal link i don't remember if this was like on instagram or it was probably on instagram maybe i put my paypal link up there it was maybe for christmas or my birthday or something i even had a guy click on my paypal link and then he didn't even give me a monetary gift he didn't even send anything but i guess when you click on the paypal link it shows my full name so he used that to like reverse search my name into linkedin connected with me on linkedin and sent me a message like oh hey this is so and so and i was thinking to myself for a good two or three days i was like how the frick did he know my real name to be able to search for me on LinkedIn because I knew that I don't remember exactly but like this was a guy that had been that had messaged me out of nowhere and I think I, I probably blocked him maybe his username was his actual name and so when I saw that same name pop up in my LinkedIn inbox I was like how on earth did this guy find me and then it dawned on me that oh he watched my story the other day that had my PayPal link so he must have clicked it just to see my name just so that he could like reverse search me and all of the other social media engines to again forcibly grasp and obtain that connection to me that he doesn't deserve that I don't owe him right because you didn't even give me like dude at least give me five or ten dollars on PayPal like you're too broke you're too dusty to even do that all of the energy that you spent like reverse searching my name in Google search and like going on other platforms to see to try to find my profile because I already blocked you on Instagram, like all of that energy that you spent, you could have literally spent it figuring out how to make money so that you could approach me in a proper way with a monetary gift. Like the lack mindset out here amongst the dusties is crazy. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, so those of you who run a YouTube channel, maybe you have experience this as well some guys will um comment on my videos have nothing to do with the video or the themes 
the topics of my channel. Like some guys will comment on my makeup videos and they'll try to just back in the day, it used to be like 90% makeup content. Recently, in the past year, I've started to branch out more into like feminine energy, savage, dark feminine energy coaching and manifestation content, that type of stuff. But like, for example, in the past, when maybe like nine out of 10 videos I posted would be makeup, but then maybe the 10th video, I would post something like a pole dance class video or, or yeah, I would post a movie review, right? Sometimes I like to watch movies and go on live and review movies and so they'll take that as an opportunity like they're they're lurking on my channel the whole time right they're not commenting on the makeup content because they know that like that's not their interest that's not uh, I'm gonna take this off they're not interested in makeup but they're interested in me right they're interested in like what my beauty what my presence can bring them for free and so they're just lurking there, waiting for me to post about a more general topic that they can then weasel their way into and I notice that they'll try to comment like okay I can tell just like with the profile icon picture I can literally tell even if the username is a generic like no picture or user you know xyz three random numbers as their username i can tell the difference between one of my girlies commenting and she doesn't even have to be commenting about makeup or something that's obviously girly she could just be telling me oh yeah i had the same experience but like i can tell the difference between that and the type of comment from like a guy that is trying to just get my attention right like he just wants to get a like from me he wants to get a reply from me like I can sense I can smell the underlying motivation from a mile away and it's just not happening you know and they'll also like I've also had guys go on my live streams as well just like this one that have a clearly defined topic uh, usually about you know manifestation or feminine energy or just something spiritual and they'll try to derail it by either they'll say hi and then they'll they'll just try to derail it by talking about themselves like oh I did this today or like this is who I am I work at blah 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 and like this is the problem that I have it's the digital equivalent of basically like walking up to you in public and waving their hands in your face trying to distract you from what you're trying to do or where you're trying to go so it's the same thing like when I'm on live I'm trying to deliver value to my Slytherin girlies I'm trying to put women on game and it's very obvious that that's what I'm trying to do it's obvious in the title of the stream and yet the, they come on and because they want a handout from me so they try to derail it by talking about themselves or they'll literally start talking about like video games in a video about how to manifest money it diverts my attention it takes away my attention even if just momentarily it disrupts my energy flow that I'm trying to pour into the thing that deserves it, which is, you know, my purpose and my desire of coming onto this platform to help other women discover their value and know their worth. And yeah, like it's not happening. You're not getting a free handout from me. That's why like, I will literally block someone if they start to message me that way. And I've also started to really just restrict all my comments on my live streams so that those types of dudes cannot even get in. I'm sure there's other ways if you can think of other ways that digital dusties try to sneakily steal time, energy, feminine energy from you, please leave them in the comments down below. Yeah, those are the ones that I was able to come up with. And now I want to leave you with two solutions, two steps that you can take to prevent this from happening, to plug the leaks in your energy online so that, of course, you're not going to be able to block every single guy out there i mean the internet is literally like the wild wild west if you choose to be on the internet right if you choose to be on social media then you're not going to be able to 100 percent buffer yourself from these types of energy sucking dudes but that doesn't mean that you can't block like 95 percent. so the first solution the most obvious one is exactly what i just said block 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 them okay most of the time all you have to do is block them most of the time we think about oh if you block someone it must be because they did something wrong to you or you guys got into an argument or you hate this person no the block feature is there to protect your peace period so if somebody is like okay if a guy follows you and then you take a brief look at his profile and you see that he is 
posting like heavy MGTOW type of stuff, just like vulgar incel MGTOW disgusting things like this guy was. Right? If somebody follows you and then you go to their profile or you go to their threads page and you find out that, oh, this is the type of content that they're consuming, this is the type of person that they are, you can block them. Like just because you guys haven't had a conversation or he hasn't reached out to you, just because he hasn't directly messaged or harassed you, this type of a person, just by following you, I would consider that to be harassment and you should block them immediately. And when you block people, like it's a good thing because every Dusty that you block makes room for men of actual quality to come into your life. Not even men, people of actual quality, right? Every lower level person that you get rid of, even if it's just online, you make room for more peace, okay? More space for like-minded people to come into your life, like-minded people to join your community, men who can actually offer you something of substance. Oh, I said I had two solutions, but there's actually, there's three. Okay, so that was the first one, just block. If they follow you and you get a bad vibe from their profile or you don't like their username, block. If they're constantly replying to your stories with an emoji or something, like with useless messages that do nothing but waste your time by reading them, block. <laughs> okay, second solution. So sometimes you're in a situation where you are interacting with a dusty IRL and you can't really escape, right? Like you can't avoid speaking directly to them. Maybe you work with them or they cornered you in public and you can't exactly be nasty because you don't know if they're going to fly off the handle. So you have to play along for the time being until you can figure out a way to escape. If this person is like pushy or trying to find out your social media, if he's asking for your Instagram, you should lie and say that you don't have Instagram or if you don't even feel safe lying, which is sad to say, but yeah, that's what we have to consider as women, like safety first, right? That's why we are so agreeable, even if we're scared or even if the dude is sketchy or especially if the dude is sketchy, we default into like the behavior that will keep us the most safe, right? That will mitigate um, harm the most. And so if you sense that a guy has like a temper issue or could possibly fly off the handle, then you're going to be nice just to make sure that the situation doesn't escalate. If you feel cornered that you cannot not give him your social media or else he'll get mad, then this is why it's helpful to have like a fake or a decoy page. I have a couple of fake accounts on Instagram that I keep just to basically give to Dusties so that it's a dead end for them. Like they can go ahead and follow me on there, but then I'll make sure that, well, number one, when I get back home, I'm going to block them immediately, even if it's on my decoy account. But just so that you have something to give to them to throw them off your scent for the time being to satisfy them, you can let them think that, okay, they have access to you. But once you get back home, you can block them and you'll be safe because they never reached your real account. So that's um, method number two. And then, oh, sorry. And then the final method, let me take a sip. Sorry. So the final method, this might be a little controversial. This might ruffle some people's feathers, but I stand behind this. I stand behind everything that I choose to say on my platform. And so the final method would be to avoid and disassociate from other women, okay, who give their attention away freely to men. Because guess what? When you are with these type of pick me girls, when you associate with them in any way, whether it's IRL or online, you will be lowered to any group that you're in, the vibe of that group, like the the mindset of that group is going to be the lowest common denominator of that group. Does that make sense? So let's say that you're a high value woman who knows your worth. You don't give away your time or energy to men for free, not because you're a bitch or anything, because you know the value of what you embody. Like, you know that it's not just for any Tom, Dick and Harry on the street to benefit from when they haven't earned it yet, right? And so let's say you're that type of a woman, but you go out to lunch with a pick me type of friend, you know, someone who's always trying to get validation from guys, someone who's always trying to like prove herself to be worthy to get attention from whatever guy. Well, when you guys are out in public, you could be the most self-respecting woman who charges guys properly for even an ounce of your energy, right? In your personal life. But the moment that you step out to lunch, with 
a girlfriend who is more on the pick me level of self worth, she will be the weakest link. And so she will be kind of like an open gateway, an open portal through which men can sniff out a chance to get at you. So like she'll be the one that if a dusty tries to place himself in your paths just to get an interaction out of you, get some energy out of you, she'll be the one like bending over backwards, giving him directions and like trying to solve his problems for him. And so since you're with her, you're gonna, you're gonna be stuck in that situation, right? Unless you literally like just walk off without a word, which you can do, but you know, you wanna be a good friend, right? You don't want to necessarily abandon your friend, but if, if she has that type of a pick me mentality, if she doesn't have strong boundaries with men in this way, then you're going to you're going to be vulnerable by being attached to her because she's going to be just an open portal, just a leaking bucket of feminine energy. Even though your bucket is sealed and has proper boundaries, she's going to be leaking. And guys will see that. And let's say a guy wants to get to you and he knows that your energy is closed off, your energy, you're not going to give him anything for free. But if he sees that you're attached to another female friend who is more open and more willing to just give her innate gifts out to anyone, then he's going to, it's going to activate his predator switch. And he's going to think that, okay, well, now I can get to that higher value woman through this lower value pick me friend, right? So just don't do it. Don't associate with these women. Or if, if you have to be their friend, be very, very selective about how you interact with them, where you interact with them, and make sure that you minimize minimize as much as possible the chances of your energy leaking as a result of being near to her. But the easiest way, of course, is just to don't deal with them at all. Only align yourself with fellow self-respecting women who understand the game, understand the power of feminine energy and respect the fact that it's not to be given away for free to foreign males, okay? Stranger males, men that have not yet proven themselves to be worthy of being in our inner circle, whether it be through marriage or, you know, a direct relationship, like a father or a brother-in-law or something. Any man who falls outside of these spheres is considered a stranger, a foreign male, and they do not just have a free walk-in access to you. Okay, so I'm gonna go order food now. I can't believe I'm still not sleepy. What time is it? Ooh, it's 11. Okay, I can definitely take a lunch break now. So I hope that you got value out of this. Thank you for being patient with me while I figured out the technical aspects of this software. It's actually quite useful. So I will see you next time. Bye.